Hi, my name is Steve Houston. You already know that if you've been to this channel before because you probably recognize my face. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to my channel. If you're a brand new subscriber, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Mash the bell on the right-hand side there. Give me a like if you enjoyed the video and send your friends, share the video out, and uh, certainly make some comments. I get back to all the comments that I can. So listen, uh, this week I'm going to back, dive back into because uh, I get this question. I, I've done a number of videos on this subject, and so maybe some of you are probably getting kind of tired of rehashing the hash, however you say it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, going back over again, um, what decisions you have to make? What are you looking for? Is the IMO really your only decision to make? I, I mean, I get this 50 to 100 times a week. People say, you know, what's the best IMO? It depends on you. And what you're looking for. I mean, I, the best IMO is one that we're with. <laughs> so, you know, I, for, or we wouldn't be here. But it could be different from you. And as I tell everybody I talk to on the phone, I can't make your decisions for you. You had to make them for yourself. But here are the different types of IMOs. Here's what they provide. Here's what you should watch out for. And when you're interviewing your recruiter uh, who's trying to sell you on his IMO, there are a certain set of questions that you should be asking and believe it or not, I'm going to go down the list today. There are actually, I tried to get it to be the Ten Commandments, right? But it really is about 11 commandments that we're going to cover. But there are different levels of IMOs, right? There's a network marketing IMO. There's the ones that allow you to build your business or build an agency if you want to. But they also allow you to get uh, the top contracts based on nothing more than your production. It doesn't matter where you live, what kind of car you drive, what your color of your skin is. If you do the production, again, all of us should be judged based only on the value that we bring to the IMO, which is the quality and the quantity of the production that we write. Then you've got the ones on the other end. you got the ones that uh, dangle the old high contract rate out to all of you. And some of you are getting hooked by the high contract rates. The interview I did last week where somebody was at a, an IMO that offered a very high contract rate. And again, her words were very specific. She says, I, I, I'm in the wrong place. They, you know, I get a high contract. They have no lead program. They provide no support because it's really designed for top producers and really veteran agents. So what good is the high contract rate? She's broke, right? So again, you have to make sure you're choosing the right IMO for what you're looking for and your level of experience. But that really is not the only decision you have to make. If you're brand new in the industry, what you need is a coach. You need someone, and I use the word mentor lightly because it kind of sounds network marketing to me, but it really is a coach that can help you with the day-to-day, -day, case by case, paint by the numbers uh, type uh, skill set that you need to learn to survive in the business. The truth is that many of these IMOs aren't in the business or not capable of giving you that case by case, day-to-day, -day, in the home, submission to commissions help and oversight that a new agent really needs. And you don't need it for long, you know, six months to a year, maybe even 90 days if you're doing enough activity, you'll know what it takes to survive this business. There's some key things that you've got to know. You've got to be able to learn a phone script that works. You've got to be able to qualify that customer on the right product. If you don't choose the right product, you're setting yourself up for declines, right? You have to be able to do a good in-home presentation. Why should they buy from you? You can't be out there selling vacuum cleaners and cars. You gotta be, this is an emotional product. You've got to be able to connect with the consumer, right? Face-to-face, kneecap to kneecap, not on the phone, right? There's a, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of tweaking that goes on with you know, that part of the process. And once you learn that, you can go anywhere and make a good living. So it just depends on what you're looking for. But again, I really think there are two decisions that you have to make. Number one, look at the IMO, interview the interviewer, right? And then number two, find yourself a coach that's with that IMO that is willing to give you that hands-on, not just tell you they're going to give you the hands-on, because a lot of them out there are telling you that, and then as soon as you sign up, you can't, they don't answer the phone anymore, right? That's not what we do at our agency. We give you a paint-by-the-numbers, step-by-step, you know, 27 to 30-page manual uh, to go through over a weekend, and then every step of the way when you're learning this business, we are on the phone working with you uh, on every single case. That's how we do things here. I, you know, most people don't do it that way. So you really have to decide what's in your best interest. This really is an all-inclusive video on, I'm going to go through the IMO types. 
I'm going to show you what you're giving up, what you're gaining by the different types and see, you know, hopefully at the end of this video, while it might be a little bit long, you'll be able to look at this video, write down the questions that you want to ask or need to ask that interviewer before you sign the contract and get stuck somewhere where you cannot get out. Okay, I got a lot of people doing that right now. They're driving Lyft, they're driving Uber, they're doing whatever they can to write out the contract. So you don't want to be in that situation. Make a quality choice. And then you can certainly get me on the phone, text me, email me, uh, pick up the phone and call me, and we can certainly have that discussion. But um, again, it's, you know, we've talked about that's not the only thing that you should be considering, not just the IMO you want. And again, the questions that you should be asking your interviewer uh, when you're considering this industry. Look, it's a great industry. 2019 is going to be the biggest year probably in this industry. There's an old saying that tea and time is more important than tea and talent. But honestly, uh, if you make the right choice, you can change your financial life in this industry this year, still in 2019. I don't know where else you can go and make the kind of money that we make in this industry, make it legally while also doing something that really makes a difference in some people's lives. So right now, I wanna go over to the whiteboard and we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty is exactly what you need to be looking for in those IMOs, so follow me. Okay, so we're at the whiteboard now. I've got it set up here. Uh, I've got it covered up here because I want you to kind of focus on the different levels here because I think this is very, very important. Hopefully this is gonna help some of you, but down here in the red, we have what I call the MLM. Network marketing really is a better word for it. And these types start you out very, very low. Uh, you know, weekly meetings, raw, raw, you know, come in, get all excited and go out there and sell your friends, family, and neighbors. Most of them do not have a lead program, don't have a lead program that they own or otherwise. It's mostly the, uh, the network marketing, you know, uh, friends, family, and neighbors concept, right? But here's the deal. Uh, they start out 35%. They go up as high as 60% in some cases. But there's some pitfalls here, right? Again, one of the biggest pitfalls is no lead program, uh, working your friends, family, and neighbors. Uh, low pay, starting you at 35%. And many times uh, you're required to, or at least, um, well, no, I wouldn't even say encourage. You're required to switch your production with your so-called upline. You have to go to the weekly meetings every week, or you should go, or they expect you to go, and drag your friends there because it's really highly driven on recruiting. Just the way it is, right? Many, many times you're recruiting before you even get licensed. I don't agree with that. The only advantage to you recruiting before you get licensed, yes, you can get an early start. Uh, if you were the right IMO, you can start building your, your team if you want to. Remember, there's no money in recruiting until you get licensed, and there's no money in recruiting even early on, even with a license. It takes time to get people into production, right? So, uh, you know, I, I prefer, as you've heard me say before, leading from the front. Learn how you put your name on an application. You should be at least demonstrating that you can do the job and you're putting your name on the application. It really comes from an integrity standpoint. So again, 35% uh, starting out. I've heard some doing that and then they're splitting with the upline. So they're really effectively getting 15 to 20%. Uh, I'm not gonna mention any names, but it's more focused on the recruiting aspect of it than it really is in selling insurance. Then you go to 45%, 50%, and somewhere as high as 60%, right? But again, low pay, too much, support or too little support and really it's not too much support because i would argue that that's support but what i mean by too much support is they're deep into your business right they're, they want you to build a warm market list and they're going to go with you on your appointments to present the product in the home to your warm market right and that's their training program and once they get done training you and when they get done training you means run out of your warm market now you're trained and they cut you loose, but now they've raided your warm market to where you have nobody else, no other warm market to call on yourself once you're fully licensed. And now you've given up all or a part of your commission, right? No technology. Some of them do have technology. Many of them don't. Again, I've already talked about split production with your upline, uh, network marketing, high recruiting, low sales, right? Upline downline model, meaning you're, I mean, most of your support's going to come through the upline downline model. Weekly, drag your warm market to meetings, meetings, right? Uh, recruit before your license, upline, raise your warm market. Those are some, those are some pitfalls you want to watch out for when you're in this network marketing MLM type structure. Now, let me explain something because I get this a lot. This is a big confusion out there with many people. Um, it's not network marketing unless you're forced to recruit, many of them allow you to recruit and build your own team and build your own agency and develop a passive or leveraged income stream. Where it goes south is, is when you're required to recruit in order to be advanced. In other words, in order to be promoted, that's where it goes south, right? 
We certainly allow on our team and our agency people that want to build that passive income, right? But we don't require them to do that for them to come in and go to the top of the contract rate. They do that based on their own personal production. So that's the key. Let's look at the number two, okay? Now, number two here is what I call business opportunity, what I just got through saying. You, those start somewhere about 70%. You'll find them as high as 90%. Uh, should give you some things. Home office training and support. They should own their own lead program. These are very, very important. Own your lead program. So I'm going to give you the questions at the end of this video to ask your recruiter, period. They're doing their own mailings. To ask them, do you have a lead program? That's not good enough because they're going to say yes. Ask them, do you do your own mailings? Do you have your own mailing house? Or are you buying leads from a third party vendor? Big difference because if they're buying leads from a third party vendor, they cannot control the quality of the lead. In other words, how many times that lead has been sold. And that's where you get the complaints, right? Uh, so I already talked about owning your own lead program. No recruiting required. Meaning again, you can come in at 7%, go all the way up to 100 to 110%, the top contract levels in this business, right? Without having to recruit. Right? As soon as they get to 80%, they draw a line and say, okay, now to get from 80 to 85, it's you and five others doing this much business. That is going back to this network marketing model where you're forced to recruit. No matter how good a producer you are, you're forced to recruit in order to get advanced. Totally disagree with that, right? So watch out for that. Don't just take the word for it. Ask for the promotion guidelines so you can see what you had to do to get to the top contract level, right? Because if you're a top producer, you want to get paid top commissions, right? Own your own book of business. Very clearly, the residuals need to come to you, period. So Mutual Omaha, Transamerica, American Amicable, UHL, LSW, whatever it is. They, they need to be paying you direct, okay? Um, technology. They should have technology to run your business on, right? Because there's a lot of, this is a simple business. And, but, you know, we go out and we sell life insurance. We sell mortgage insurance. We sell final expense. But if you're representing 20, 25 carriers, you could write with 20 different carriers in one week. How do you track your business? That's what I want to know. Can I log into one back office portal, see all my production, and communicate with my IMO? right? Communicate with the carriers through that same platform? Or do I have to call 20 different carriers, sit on hold, or hire an administrative person to call the carriers and find out where my application is? Because I've got news for you folks. If you're not tracking your pendings, they'll sit there forever until they time out and they'll get dropped. You've got to be in communication with that, that carrier on your business, right? Your applications that you have pending or they're never gonna push out the other end, right? So you gotta have somebody doing that. Either you, or you're gonna to have to hire somebody, spouse, girlfriend, whatever, but you need to have a central portal, technology, free to you, so you can track all your business. Otherwise, it's several hours a day to track your business, right? Uh, can I build if, I, if desired? That's what you want, right? You don't wanna be required to build, but you, many of you do wanna have the option, right? Look, we get paid so much money in this business, it's scary, right? It should be illegal, but it's not right? We get paid very, very, very well with upfront commissions. We also get paid residual income. So we're building something here. It may not be the easiest sales job in the, the, the world. It is the most rewarding because what we do matters. However, you can also get that third type of income, which is passive or leveraged income. Now that doesn't mean that the people that you bring on makes less than you, right? Everybody should come in at the same level and given the, be given the opportunity to do something with their life and build something, right? If they come in based on a resume or who they know and, they, and, they, and they're up here at 90 or you're down here at 30 or whatever it is, it's that who you know program, right? How are you ever going to build something with an IMO that plays games like that? Everybody should come at the same level, given the same opportunity, and if they want to build, be promoted based on that team production as well as their own production, but you should not have to recruit in order to get advanced to the top contract. It's very, very important. Look at the promotion guidelines. Find out what's required to get to 100 to 110%. Because even if you're a good part-time producer, you should be at 100% contract doing five apps a week. Very simple, right? And if you want to build, do that to get bonus of that production and credit for that production. And that'll also get you promoted to the comp plan.
right? But the last thing you want to be is being a very, very good top producer, right? But being held down by an upline so he can get you in your pocket and take more money out of it simply because you didn't bring him some new blood, right? You're not getting paid what you're worth as a producer, and that's the point, right? So bonuses on personal and on management. So if you are building, there should be bonus programs for you for that. For what you, bonus on what your team does, bonus also on what you do. Agency level support, coaching, and mentoring. Again, this comes down to who you're with. This is not an IMO thing. I truly believe that that is the game changer. It is a difference maker. Being coached by somebody that has years in the business that can teach you and your agents things like how do I enter an application? Give me a phone script that's time tested and proven. Help me and my agents select the correct products. These things allow you to succeed, right? Help me in the home. Help me get my applications from submission to commission. Many of these IMOs are not in the business to do that for you. They're trying to provide support for, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 agents. Our IMO is very, very good at that, right? But they're not in the business to be hand-holding you on role-playing a phone script with you, teaching you how to handle objections, having the ability for you to call from the home, those type of things, working your pendings. These things are, should be provided to you at the agency level support right, from your coach and from your mentor. Being able to call from you in the home, from sitting at the kitchen table, and talk to that mentor, or talk to that coach, and have him talk to your clients is huge, right? Is it worth giving up a few percentage points to have that kind of support? You bet it is, because he's gonna make you money. That's what we do here at our agency every day. We close about 70% of the business that we get, that we're able to talk directly to the clients in the home with our agent sitting at the kitchen table, right? So uh, that's really this kind of mid-level where you have an opportunity to build a business. The next thing is what I call zero support. This is really for seasoned agents. They're dangling that carrot out there of very high contract rates of 100% or above, but you're giving up most of this because they're looking for either agents that aren't aware or they're looking for seasoned agents that don't need any support or training, they don't need a lead program, because many of them don't own a lead program. They may provide leads, but they're buying them from a th third-party vendor. No training, no teaching, no coaching and mentoring. They're not designed for that, right? You're getting paid a top contract rate for a reason, because you are experienced, because you don't need any help. It's really for uh, people that want to come in this business and want to sell the rest of their life and do nothing else. It's not a place to be if you want to build an agency. Uh, low if any support. I already talked about being a, a forever salesman or saleswoman. Difficult to build here because everybody's coming at the high contract rate and you don't have time to go out and work with people like I just talked to you about that hands-on training if you're not making any money. So no lead program. They don't own their own lead program. So that's really the, you know, I hope this graphic, take a picture with your, with your phone and have that in front of you. Here, I'm going to give you the questions that you want to ask your recruiter the next time that you speak to one. Number one, do you have world-class technology for me to build my business on and to be able to track my production on? And it has to be free. Do you cap my income if I don't recruit? Am I forced to recruit to get to the top contract rate? Very simple. So ask him, number one or her, what's your comp plan look like? What do I come in at? What can I be promoted to? If he says you come in at 60, you go to 110, ask him, okay, how do I get to 110? Do I have to recruit to get to 110? That's what you want to ask him, him or her, okay? The next thing is a high quality lead program, right? High quality lead program backed by technology so they have the ability to remove the lead once it's been sold a product. Very, very important. A lot of these IMOs want to talk about, we've got two, 300,000 leads in, in, in our system. Sure they do, because the lead never leaves the system, right? What good is that if you're buying a lead that's already been sold a product? So make sure they have a technology package that can remove the lead. Make sure they own their own mailing house. Ask them, do you do your own mailing or are you buying third-party leads? Very simple, okay? Okay, do you provide training? What type of training? Do you charge for training? Another very, very important question. That's number four. The next one is pay me what I'm worth. Will you pay me what I'm worth all the way up to the top contract rate? No recruiting required. Is there home office level support? If I have a question with a, regarding contracting, anything, can I call the home office? Very simple. As an agent, can I call your home office to get assistance? As soon as they go take a right turn and say, no, no, just call me. Well, we do that for agents too, but there's times when they need help at the home office level and you should be able to call the home office. So number seven is 
I want to be promoted based on my own efforts. And it should be able to be promoted every two months. And once that promotion is hit, is it permanent? Number eight, do you have memberships that I must join in order for me to get promoted? Okay, number nine, is there an ownership option? Do you have profit sharing? Do you have equity sharing? Whatever you want to call it, is there an ownership option for me as an agent to be able to tap into that? If I help grow this IMO, will I be rewarded for it? Ask that question, okay? And get into that a little bit. Here's a big one. Am I paid direct from the carrier? Or does the money flow through the IMO and then you pay me? I don't know why anybody be in that situation. Look, I want my money to be secured by highly, highly, highly regulated carriers in this industry. A-rated, billion dollar carriers that drives this industry. I know that my money is guaranteed because I'm building something, not only for myself in terms of upfront commissions, but also what I leave behind in my family in terms of residual income. And if I build an agency, I'm leaving behind also that leveraged income or passive income. I want that coming from the carriers, not from the IMO. They may or may not stay in business and there goes my money, right? And if it goes to their hands, they control it. I would not be a part of that, but that's a decision that you have to make. Okay, so here's your checklist. You should be writing this down so you have it in front of you. Number one, world-class technology, right? So I can track my business. I can look at the apps I've written, so I can communicate with the IMO and the carriers. I can see what's pending. I can see what's paid through one dashboard, and I want it for free. Number two, no income caps. I want to be able to have two paths of success. I want to be promoted based on my own production. If I choose to build an agency, I want to get bonus and pay for that as well. Number three, high quality lead program that the IMO owns. Do you own your own lead program or are you buying leads from a third party vendor? Number four, pay me what I'm worth based only on my personal production. If I choose to build, you can add that production into my own production and promote me based on that. But I do not want to be required to build an agency until I'm ready. And if I'm producing as a top producer, I want to be able to go to the top contract of 100, 110, whatever it is. Okay. Number six, I want to be able to call the home office if I need support. Maybe my agency manager is not available, my coach and mentor is not available, or I've got questions about a carrier or a contract or something that he doesn't need to get involved in, he or she. I, can I call the home office? Do you, do you provide support and assistance on the phone or on chat or both, period, or on email, right? Can I, as an agent, contact the home office or do I have to go through that upline, downline model? Number seven, I want to be promoted at least every two months, every two months based on my personal production or my team's production and mine combined, I want to get promoted at least every two months. And here's the point, once I attain that level, I want that level to be permanent. Always up, never down, okay? Number eight, no memberships I have to join in order to get promoted. I already told you, you want to get promoted based on only your production, period. Not who you know, what color your skin is, what car you drive, what neighborhood you live in, and certainly not who you know at the agency or who you know at the home office, right? That's not a fair program, okay? Number nine, is there an ownership option? Do I have the opportunity to share in the success of the IMO through an equity share program or profit sharing, whatever you want to call it? Is there an ownership option? I believe there should be. Number 10, bonuses. Again, there should be production bonuses and there should be manager bonuses if you choose to be a manager in addition to your commissions. Here's the last thing. All my money should be paid directly from the carriers who have an agent number to write with. In other words, billion dollar carriers, very, very highly regulated companies. I know that if my money is vested into those companies, if something happens to the IMO, I'm still getting paid. You do not want to have your money flowing through somebody else's hands. Uh, am I paid from the carriers? Period. Those are some checklists that you should be asking when you're interviewing your IMO and when you're interviewing your coach. Now, here's the thing. As I said before, it's not just an IMO decision. What you really want is the best IMO. You want to go out and find a coach and an agency that will teach you and your agents things like phone scripts, role playing the phone scripts, an in-home presentation, how to handle objections. Product selection is huge. If you don't select the right products, that's why most people in this industry fail and they have declines and rated policies and nothing ever gets, they might write it, 
but it never gets pushed out the other side. That is a critical game changer difference maker and certainly sets you up for long-term success. You want to find that person, right? That's what we do every single day with our agents. We have three people on the phone and we're there with them. We give them a 27 page manual that takes them through our whole program and one-on-one day in, day out, case by case, paint by the numbers, coaching. All of that stuff, like I said earlier, is huge to your success, okay? So that's the kind of support you're looking for, and then you want to have make sure that that person is with the right IMO that gives you all of these things that I talked about earlier. Now you have it, right? Now you've made a good quality decision, you've set yourself on the right path to success, and, uh, and you can succeed in this fantastic industry. I hope this video makes sense. Once you know what all these different IMOs are, just choose where you think you fit best, and make a quality decision and then go for it, right? It's a great industry and you can make serious money and set your family on the road to financial prosperity for the rest of your life. And remember, the surest way to succeed is to never quit, right? If you refuse to quit and you continue to do the activities that get the results that you want, which is success, income, work-life balance, all of that stuff, you're gonna fail, be willing to fail. We learn by failing. That's what we do as humans. Failing has become a bad word. You will fail, who cares? Get the next lead, run the next appointment, lock into your coach. When I talk about coach, I'm talking about being with somebody that has proven success, leading by the front, putting their names on applications. That way they can teach you how to become successful. Not book knowledge. Imagine trying to learn how to do a surgery from a guy on the phone that's reading it out of a book. Okay, doesn't work that way. So you gotta find someone that, that again, leads in front, is out in the field, producing, and has proven success, not someone that signed up just a few minutes ago. This is a very, very important decision. And signing up with somebody that's local, or signing up with your sister or your brother because you know that's a family member, will derail your success. You should want to be with somebody that can teach you the skills of this business. Unless you want the network marketing type model where it's all about going to parties and having fun, that's great. But if you want to succeed, locality has nothing to do with it. We have agents all across the United States, right? And we're on the phone with them every single day, every single case, day in, day out, teaching them how to succeed in this business. That's what you should look for, all right? Have a great day. I hope this video has been valuable to you. If it has been, share it out. Give it a thumbs up. Make me a comment. It, uh, it just encourages me to come out here and keep doing these videos for you. All right, bye-bye now.